Thank you, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Father God. Lord, we come boldly before your throne this morning, God. Just want to say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for simply being you, oh God. For being the Alpha and the Omega, God, of our lives, Lord Jesus, of our decisions, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to, to wake up, to live, to see this moment in time, God, to, to be here, to be gathered, Father God, in your presence, oh Lord. We give you honor, God. We give you glory, God, and we lift you up this morning, God. We, we invite your presence into this place this morning, oh God. We give you so much glory, God. We adore you on this morning, oh God. We lift you up, oh God, because you deserve it, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for everything that you've done, God, for all that you are, God, and all that you continue to do, oh God. Thank you, oh holy God. Thank you, oh God. The author, God, and the finisher, oh God. Thank you, oh God. The crafter, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We ask, God, that you will forgive us, God, for our sins, Lord Jesus, including no sins we may have committed unintentionally, God, and unknowingly, Father. And we ask, God, that you will bring those things, Lord Jesus, that those offenses, God, bring those up, Father God, so that we may deal with them properly, Father God. And give us, God, wisdom, Lord Jesus, so that we may navigate, Lord Jesus, in this realm, Lord Jesus, to do your will, God, and not that of our own Father. I pray, God, that you will give us strength, God, that you will give us boldness, Father God, to go forth, Lord Jesus, and to, to minister your word, God, to save those souls that need to be saved, Father God. To, to provide a testimony, God, of, of our own lives, Lord Jesus, so that people may understand and see, Lord Jesus, that we're all a part of your body, God. That you called us all, Lord Jesus, to be a part of your body, God. That we're not above anybody else, Father God. <clears throat> we thank you, God, for your grace, God. We thank you, God, for your mercy, Father God. I pray, God, that we extend that same grace and mercy to those that we minister to, Father. I pray, God, that you would give us the opportunity, God, to uh, allow us, Lord Jesus, to, to open up um, your word to someone, God, this week, Father God, today, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you will soften hearts, Lord Jesus, and uh, allow us to to plant the seed, Lord Jesus, that we pray you will water so that it may grow, Father. The ultimate gift, Lord Jesus, was when your son died for us, God. He defeated death, Lord Jesus, and, and we're here because of it, God. And I thank you so much for the opportunity, God, for allowing us to be witnesses of your word, God. So I thank you this morning, oh God. I bless your holy name this morning, oh God. I pray, God, that as the word comes forth this morning, oh God, that it will save lives, God. It will minister, Lord Jesus, to heal, Father God, in places that maybe we didn't even know we were broken in, Lord Jesus. I just pray, God, that you will heal, Father God, restore, God, um, refresh us, Father God. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus, to do your walk, God, to do your will, God, to say the things that you want us to say, God, to be mindful, God, of the works that you want us to do, God, that we are your vessels, Lord Jesus. We are here to give you honor, God, to give you glory, God, to, to do your work, God, in this, in this realm, Father God. We just want you to get the glory, God. I pray against selfish ambition, Father God. I pray against the spirit of pride, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, against our own egos, God, and, 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 and what we want, God. You are not our personal genie, O oh Lord. And I ask, Father God, that you will humble our hearts, God. Humble our minds, O oh God. Give us wisdom in the decisions that we make, O oh God. 
so that we are mindful and thoughtful, God, and strategic, Lord Jesus, and, and what we're asking to do, God, in this realm, God. What we're asking you to do in our in our lives, God, in our families' lives, God, in our children's lives, God, in our marriages, God. Yes, God. I, I, I pray for our marriages this morning, oh God. I pray, God, that your word, Lord Jesus, will come forth, Lord Jesus, in the marriage bed, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that as husbands, Lord Jesus, submit, Lord Jesus, themselves, God, under your authority, God, that wives will do the same, Lord Jesus, with their husbands, Father God, and that it's not about control, Lord Jesus. It's the authority, God, that you've already set up since the beginning of time, Lord Jesus. And I pray, God, that we seek your wisdom, God, and as wise, Lord Jesus, how to pray for our husbands, Lord Jesus, so that the decisions that are being made, God, are being godly decisions, God, not just good decisions, God, but godly decisions, God. We pray for godly decisions to guide our households, Lord Jesus. We pray for godly de decisions, oh God, to be the provision, Father God, of what our household is built upon, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, oh God. Strengthen, Lord Jesus, the minds of our husbands, God, of the kings, God, of, these, of the fathers, Lord Jesus. Strengthen their hearts, God. Soften their hearts, oh God, to be more loving to, to their wives, God, to love their wives as they love themselves, God, to be compassionate, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that whoever is going through a, a broken or suffering through a problems or difficulties, Lord Jesus, in their marriage right now, God, that you would give them the strength, God, to persevere, Father God. That you will send a word, Lord Jesus. Send your word, God. Send your Holy Spirit, oh God. To dwell among them, Father God. To change them, oh God. Change their minds, God. Change their thoughts, oh God. Change their hearts, oh God. I pray, God, for fellowship amongst man and woman, Lord Jesus. As husband and wife, Lord Jesus. That they be united as one, oh God. So we thank you, Father God, for the marriages, God. We thank you, God, for the for the covenant, Lord Jesus, that you created, Lord God Almighty, for those marriages to thrive under, God. So as we put you first, Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that your divine will be done within our marriages, God. I pray, God, for our children this morning, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will continue to, to walk with them, God, to guide them, oh God, to strengthen them, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that your angels, Lord Jesus, will continue to ascend around them, Father God, as they go throughout the week, God, as they go to school, God. You know my prayer every morning is that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father God. Yes, God. No threat, God, no bullying, Lord Jesus. Yes, Nothing, God. No word, God. I. I I pray that they will continue to be victors, God, that they will be reminded, God, that they are victorious, Lord Jesus, that they are leaders, God, and not followers, Lord Jesus. So I thank you, God, for our children, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for our parents, God. I thank you, God, for this ministry, God. I thank you, God, for the saints, God, for your body, God, that you will strengthen your body, God, that we, we will be united within the body, Father, God. That no walls, God, no names, God, denominations, oh God, will cause us to be divided, Lord yes. Jesus. But we are one body, Father God. Yes, God. This house will not be divided, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So we give you glory this morning, Father God, and we lift you up, God. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for our health, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, God. We appreciate it, God. I appreciate you, God. I appreciate you, God. I love you so much, Lord. And I thank you so much, God. Thank you, God. 
As we continue through this service this morning, oh God, let our hearts and our minds continue to be settled on you, Lord Jesus, and free of distractions, oh God. And this is my prayer this morning, oh God, my intercession, Father God, and it's in Jesus' precious name I pray, God. Amen. Amen. I just, I just have to say, that was my wife that was praying for those. <laughs> yeah. And maybe watching verses. That's all me. It's good to see you yeah. this morning. And for yeah. those who may be watching verses, it's good to be seen. Amen. Amen. But it's summertime here at True Believer. Amen. 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 We're excited for summertime here at True Believer. I'm glad to see everybody out here standing and ready to give. So, with that being said, y'all gonna repeat after me with the soil and proclamation. Amen. Amen. Being obedient to God's will. Being obedient to God's will. I sow into my future. I sow into my future. A future of peace. A future of peace. A future of love. A future of love. And a future of prosperity. And a future of prosperity. I gladly give back. I gladly give back. To God. To God. So that he. So that he. Can gladly give me. Can gladly give me. My rightful inheritance. My rightful inheritance. Amen. Amen. Again, it's good to see y'all this morning. Amen. You know, we got walking testimonies in here. Amen. We got walking blessings in here. Amen. We got all kind of stuff going on in here right now. And I'm good to see all of y'all. All of y'all, I'm happy y'all are here. Amen. So, this morning, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be something unprecedented at True Believer. <laughs> it's going to be a president. This morning, I am not giving a word. The word is going to be brought forth by not one, but two people this morning. So, I'm not going to hold y'all up and keep you in suspense for too much longer. We're going to jump off into this thing right here. And I'm going to introduce to some and present to others. Prophetess Kimberly Okafor and Lady Latasha Mitchell. All right. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Before we begin, it was the song the Lord gave. Well, put down in my spirit. As they say, <laughs> it's called fill me up. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit. And I will open up inside. Yeah. 
wanna run. of prayer, asking for something earnestly. Amen? Amen? So prayer, as we know, is communication with God simply. 
in times past, man to God. Now we communicate in the New Testament time through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one that makes intercession for us. Amen. 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 Y'all here today? Amen. 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 Don't be distracted. <laughs> Because the word is still the word regardless. Amen. And Romans 8, 26, it tells us likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, which is our physical weaknesses. Amen. Amen. From illness that keeps us from enjoying life. That's what infirmities is. But the spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. 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 She talked about infirmities and diseases in the body. And the Holy Spirit gave us this revelation years ago. When we break down the word dis-ease, meaning not at ease, right? We think about those. It truly is a manifesting, a manifestation of those things that are not at ease in our spirit. And it manifests as dis-ease physically. Amen. Amen. But when we take those things to the Lord in prayer, he is our great physician. Amen. So those things that are diseased in our spirits become healed, whole, well. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Therefore, the manifestation of healing begins physically. So when we understand the true underlying issues of disease, is the disease in our spirit, man. It's, it's where we are not right with God. It's not just the food that you eat. That's a, that's a part of it. But truly, when you understand, when you put stuff in your body that's not good for you, knowing that it's not good with you or for you, it's something wrong here. Yeah. Amen. It's something wrong here because if you love yourself, then why would you continue to harm yourself? Amen. So we're going to go right back to the disease in our spirit, man. Jesus is the great physician. And when we come to him in prayer and ask to be healed, whole, well, repenting of those old mindsets, then he say, yes, old things have passed away. And now all things can be new in you. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so since you was talking about miraculous healing, Amen. we're going to look at what power is. Yeah. There are various types of power. Amen. Yeah. And the one you're talking about is that dunamis yeah. power. Amen. That strength, yeah. that might, that ability to perform. Amen. How do you make your prayer strong and mighty? Only God can do that. <laughs> we can't do it of ourselves. We can only do it through the power of God. Amen. The second type of power, which there are numerous ones, but the second one is the Azusa one. Operating in a designated jurisdiction with delegated empowerment authorization as a right or a privilege. So the power just ain't willy-nilly. It has authority. <laughs> Amen. Also, when you, it also belongs to the righteous. Yes, yes. Because God only, He only communicate. Well, yes, He will communicate with sinners through through Jesus. We know we can come and repent of our sins. But as the blood of Jesus cleanses us and causes us to be righteous, it puts us in another place and position and authority, a right <laughs> to walk in this kind of power, exousia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's that righteousness that we obtain through Christ Jesus yeah. that gives us the ability to operate yeah. in this. The world can't do that. No. They can't do that. <laughs> no. 
that's not even their right. It's not something for them. The word of the Lord says, the weapons, no, uh, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that comes against me, I shall condemn, right? For it is the, the privilege, the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. And then say the servants of the world. Right, right. It said the servants of the Lord. Lord that's right. Come on, and only the righteous are the servants of the Lord. We're talking about Yahweh, yeah. the Lord. We're talking about Jesus, the Lord. Yeah. So there's an inheritance. There's a right. There's something that belongs to us that doesn't belong to other people. And that's that ability to operate in God's kind of power. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. And we execute that in prayer and through prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the title again, Power in Prayer. Power in Prayer. So when you hear that, this tells us that power, prayer has the ability to gain and inherit power. But if you can have power in prayer, you can also have no power in prayer. So sad. Let me say that again. If you can have power in prayer, that means you can also have no power in prayer. Amen. Matthew 6, 5 through 8 says, don't pray for attention or for vain glory because God already knows what you need. He knows your business. He knows your affairs. Amen. So, this page is thinking. Because when you pray with no power, that's when we begin to pray and miss. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, look, look at God. Look yes. Look. James 4 and 3. James 4 and 3. Have those my Look at God. <laughs> Ain't no space in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> ye ask and receive it not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lust. Yes, yes, yes. And the Lord gave us, a, we have an understanding what the Word of God means. When we begin to pray amiss, it means not having the word of God as your backing, not in the will of God, praying contrary to the word of God. It also says, it gave us the meaning of, of vain repetition, gave us uh, to chatter, to be long-winded, to utter empty words, idle words. And when we looked up the definition of idle, it began to say that these are words that are not occupied or employed. They have no assignment. God's word said that his word will accomplish everything that he set it for to do. Right. But when we pray amiss, we pray with no power. There is no assignment. Therefore, there is no accomplishment. Not according to the word and the will of God. Now, the Bible also tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue, and those that eat it shall enjoy the fruit thereof, right? Right. So if we're not speaking words that are in agreement with the word and will of God so that they can bring forth fruit, then that means we're speaking death. Uh, so on. though it's not the power of life that we're looking for, oh, it's death. That's right. Right. So it, it, we're looking for the power that creates life yeah, right. in our words. And when we let that in our words, we see the, the death portion of it. So be mindful of those words that we release in the atmosphere because we are created in God's image and in his likeness. He is a speaking spirit with the ability to create in his words. And he has given us that same ability. So your words have a meaning whether you realize it or not. And when you speak contrary to the word of God, you speak death. Uh. Come on. He is life. He is life. Now, there are times when we should speak death to things. Because there's some stuff that we shouldn't have in our life. Chaos and confusion and, and, and all those other things. Malice. Hatred. We speak death to those things because we don't want them to manifest and produce fruit in our lives. But everything that we want God to bring life to, joy, peace, prosperity, 
all of those things we begin to speak life to. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Right, right. Amen. And for those that's taking the notes, a miss is kekus, yes, meaning you ask improperly, wrong, or with bad intent. Uh, bad intent. Once again, yeah. a miss. Because sometimes we see words in scripture and we don't understand what they mean. Yes. In its meaning, amen, is kakoos. Meaning you ask improperly, wrong, or with bad intent. So that means you could be asking, but your heart ain't right. <laughs> Amiss. You could be saying the things, referencing God, but your heart your intent is wrong. That's right. Wrong with it. We got to think on that. Romans 8 9 says, If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. For those who believe all creation is God's, that's His. Those people are His. Those that believe that we are God's, we're His. Instead, you are Satan's if you don't have his spirit. So we got to be mindful of that. Yeah. Amen. Like he was just speaking that the Holy Spirit said, if I'm not in those words, if I'm not in your heart, then we're not in agreement. Mm -hmm. And he said, do this. That's why it's so important for us <laughs> to literally hold on to the spirit of God. Uh -huh. So that when we begin to speak those words, our heart is in agreement with the word of God. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. yeah. He said, do this just like this. So we're going to stand here and we're going to be in agreement. Because the word says, how can two walk together unless they be, unless they be agreed? That's right. And this is just a physical example of how we agree with the word of God and the spirit of God in our lives. But truly, when we have the spirit of God, it's an indwelling. So we'll just say this is an example of our heart binding with the spirit of God's heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. And we're going to go forth. Yes, he is. Come on. We're going to do it together. <laughs> and we're going to exemplify this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Romans 8, 11 says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. The spirit within you will cause you to rise up from sin, from your sin. So if you have not mortified the deeds of your body, you can't expect for the Lord to answer your prayer or for you to have power in prayer. If you still walking in the flesh, you can't expect the spirit healing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We can't expect godly solutions with fleshly delusions. We can't expect godly solutions with fleshly delusions. You can't go to God with the mind of the flesh and expect God to just handle it. We think we can keep our mindset where it is while expecting God to intervene. But the God, God gave me a picture of this. Y'all remember my tub? No. <laughs> Slapping that prayer down. Yeah. It don't look like me. Uh. No, no, no. Bah. He's slapping that prayer down because you pray in a mess. Uh, That's the picture he gave me. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. stopped laughing. Because <laughs> when you think about it, oh no, there's too much flesh in that prayer. Bah. For the basketball people, y'all can envision that, right? Yeah, yeah he blocking that. Bah. It's going into the crowds. My will abides in my house. My word abides in my house. Your fleshly desires don't line up with my word. Oh, oh, nah, nah, we ain't try again. again. Try again. Try again. And think of Cain. He attempted to use fleshly reasoning to connect with God. God told him in Genesis 4 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Uh, yeah. If thou doest well, meaning get your heart right. right. If you come with me to me right, won't I not accept you? Let's think on that for a minute. 
Amen. 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 And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And until these shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. <laughs> the desire will rule over him. If you ain't coming right. Amen. Amen. We must rule over the desire to come to God in a fleshly manner. We must put some respect on his name. Yeah. Amen. Because his name is holy. That's right. He is holy. That's right. And if we remember how he responded to Job when Job forgot who he was talking to. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. It, I actually looked at how long when God just thought, bah, bah, bah. it took four chapters. God went in on Job <laughs> and told because he forgot. He told him, you ain't speaking with wisdom. You ain't speaking with knowledge. Four chapters. <laughs> Who created this? Did you do this? Can you do this? I don't think you put breath in this. You forgot. <laughs> you must have forgot. Like he said, Roy Jones. <laughs> and Job had to repent. He said, I, I should put my hand over my mouth. Yeah, you should. And he repented. Because he realized I need to shut up. <laughs> when I come to God, I need to come correct. Amen. Amen. So that's in Job 38 41, where you can see God talking to Job. Amen. Yeah, and I say basically read him his rights. Amen. <laughs> and he told him to stand as a man and answer me since you speak with no knowledge. as a man. No, take this. You, are, you about to take this. Yeah. I'm about to give this all to you since you're coming to me like this. Yeah. Stand as a man and answer me. Mm -hmm. bah, bah, bah. That, that part there, I like about you. Because <laughs> like I say, he's the original. <laughs> Gee. Right. Yeah. So that was funny to me. And in another part of Job 35, 16, it says, Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain. He multiplied words without knowledge. 34 and 35 says, Job hath spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. So we need to think of that when we come into God in prayer. Are you coming in a vain manner? Are you just loosely, yeah, God will take anything. No, he will not. Bah! He's slapping it down. I am. He know, God know my heart. He know me. He know me. He going to love me in spite of it. Yeah, he going to love you in spite of it, but is he going to receive it? Yeah. Is he going to honor it? Yeah. And the answer is yeah. no. Yeah. Uh. Try again. Try again. <laughs> Try again. We have to come to God in a reverencing manner, leaving our flesh behind. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the picture he gave to me with the power of prayer is like you have the satellite up there. When we have power in prayer, he sees the signal down here on earth and it shoots upward. He sees it from all the way up in the seventh heaven. <laughs> down here on the earth he sees that power he connects with that power amen yeah. now that's, that's God because he gave me the revelation of an atomic bomb going off <laughs> but if you know anything about how those signals are set off yeah they push the button from Washington or from Japan or whatever but that signal go up into the space into the atmosphere and the satellite send the signal back down That's right. and God says that when we begin to pray the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous yes. that avail much the effects are like an atomic bomb mm -hmm. in the uh, spirit realm yes, right. Yes, right. hallelujah so seriously our words are loaded the word of God is loaded with his power. If we just look at the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning 
was God, right? In the beginning, and, and he spoke, let there be light. And in those words, let there be light was power. Yeah. It wasn't just a word. It was, it, it actually had meaning and life and spirit yeah. in it. So everything that he even spoke into existence, the stars, the moon, everything, the sun, everything, they have spirit. They were brought into existence by words filled with life and spirit. That's right. That's right. So we look at the stars and we just say, oh, you balls of gas. And, and we just, it's us, you know, we just take for granted what you are. Oh, that star is shooting over because we see it as just a cycle. But God says, no, I've given these stars even instructions. They have patterns that they have to follow. They have to. They have, to. Right. They have spirit yeah, yeah. and life attached to them. Yeah. That's how awesome and powerful our God is. That's right. That's right. That's how awesome and powerful our God is. And when we realize that we're made in that same likeness and image, and we have the ability to operate in that same kind of power, not as the big G, but the little G. Because remember, he gave us authority over this earth realm. He says, subdue it and take authority and rule in it, on it, however you want to call it. Right. But this is our domain. So we act as God in that ability with our words to create. So my question to you is, what are the prayers that you're praying to God? What is the goal that you are trying to achieve? Because if you don't have a purpose in your prayer, then you, what, what are you praying for? What is the purpose of it? Yes, it's good to relate to the Lord. We can relate to God in just a general conversation. But again, what is your purpose in relating to the Lord? Men, when y'all see that pretty woman, single men, before you got your wives, I'm just going to say, because most of the men in here is, is married. Yeah. Yeah. When you walked up to your wife, you had a purpose yeah, we did. for going to initiate conversation. <laughs> I'm mean? not going to say whether it was godly or not. I'm yeah. just going to say you had a purpose. You had intent. Yeah. There was a reason why you wanted to establish relationship yeah. with that woman. That's right. It was a purpose. Yeah. God is relational. Right? Now, we as women, we can discern. We discern whether men have godly intentions yeah. for, for us or not. Nice right so and and those of us who understand women we are the spiritual womb carriers so that's the spiritual womb carrying ability that god has in him right right so we understand that um we have to be mindful of what we agree with that's right. just as god does he sees your intention he gives us the ability to see your intention when you walk up to us Right? But we have to decide whether we're going to say, I agree with this or not. And God says, but if you're not coming to me with the right agenda, I'm not hearing you. We can't walk together. I don't agree with that. So what is your attention? What is your reasoning for coming to the Lord in prayer? Are you coming for your own selfish desires? Or are you truly praying that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven? In heaven, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you praying God's will to be manifested in your life? Are you praying prosperity over the righteous? Are you praying that Jesus' name be lifted up so that he could do all the drawing? Are you praying for salvation of souls? Are, are we praying really truthfully the will of God for our lives? Lord, help me to love my enemies. Help me to master this love walk. Because we always want to talk about being a conduit for God to use us, prosperity uh, and influence, like financially and stuff like that. But truly, are we asking God to be his love conduits? The world is always saying what the world needs now is a little bit more love, right? But if we are God's love, we're his representatives, are we exemplifying the love of God? Uh. Are 
are we doing that? Are we praying, God, help me to exemplify your love. Even in a situation where I want to walk in my flesh, God, help me to die to my flesh and live in your spirit of love and peace and unity. I'm going to say it again. What is the purpose of your approach to God in prayer? If it's not godly, I'm going to challenge you to change your heart, change your mindset, to not just pray for the things that benefit you, but pray for the things that give God glory. Pray for the things that build the body of Christ. Pray for the things that affect this world. That's right. We asking for God to bless us with more, but what is your purpose for more? Is it just so you can say you blessed? Or are you trying to go and help other people who don't have? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, amen. I'm going to have to skip some sections because she, she all up in that area. <laughs> but amen. It's a goodness gracious. That's all I can say. <laughs> When you pray correctly, as in Matthew 6, 9 and 13, we see Jesus giving an example of how to pray in the Lord's Prayer. The example he gave gets through to the Father. Amen. And I'm going to just say that part. I say when you pray, like you said, praying not just for yourself, but for others, he gives you the insight of more than just you. It spans all across, it can span all across the world, Amen. to Asia, to Hong Kong, to Africa, to Ghana, to England, to wherever. He wants to give you a little bit of insight when you're in righteousness to intercede for this person, that person, and you don't have to know them. That's what the power in prayer can do. Not just your situation, but other people, because the point is to uplift his kingdom. Amen? Amen. So let's think about the story of Saul and Ananias. They weren't in the same area, but God gave Saul instructions. God gave Ananias instructions, and he brought them two together. Amen? And that's in Acts 9, 10 through 19. That's right, that's right. From the instructions, Saul's blinded eyes were healed. Uh -huh. So it's imperative that we listen to God in prayer. Like we said, it's a cycle. You're talking. He's talking back to you. Yeah. It's not just one-sided. It's twofold. He's going to give you instructions if you're praying righteously right. to do something. Not just to harbor it all within. The point is to work. Do something in his will. Amen. And because Ananias was sensitive, he was listening, he was righteous. Saul, who wrote ten thirds of our Bible, <laughs> his words, his writings, has helped many people. Amen. Obedience. He was obedient. So how can we make sure when we pray that we have power, that the prayer has power? We're going to take a look in the book of Adam and Eve. The first time the word prayer is mentioned is in chapter 3, 5 of the book of Adam and Eve. Here you see Adam asked God to explain the five and a half days that pertains to the time frame of the word. Amen. Jesus would save them in that five and a, half days. and a half days. He thought it was actual five and a half days, but he had no knowledge. But he asked the right person. He didn't go ask Eve because he ain't even had no knowledge. He asked God. <laughs> he asked God. So God gave him the answer because he sought him. He sought understanding. He gave him the answer and told him what it meant. That Jesus is going to come save you 5,500 years down the line. That's right. And you can see this also in James 1 and 5. If any of you 
lack wisdom. Let him ask of God. That's right. That's what he did. Right. He didn't understand. He didn't have no wisdom at that time. So who did he ask? He asked God. And it says in that same scripture, let him ask God that gives all men liberally and a break not. He's going to give you wisdom generously with no no holding back. Amen. And he ain't going to get reproach you as the as the interlinear says. He ain't going to cut you down for asking him for wisdom. Right. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants you to be knowledgeable. Amen. He wants you to know what to do. Amen. What to look out for. How you should go about your life. Amen. 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 So he ain't going to find fault in you because you're asking. Like some people, you can't ask God. No, no he wants you to ask. If anybody you should ask, it should be God. Don't ask your mom. Because <laughs> she may not have that wisdom. So it's a different in your questioning. Yeah. yeah. Are you questioning his power yeah, and yeah. his authority, yeah. his reasoning? Yeah. Or are you asking for clarification, yeah. for understanding yeah. why the things are that they are? There's a difference. Yeah. And just think about being a parent. If your child asks you, Okay, well, can you explain to me why my curfew is 1030 and I'm 18? Because I said Versus, <laughs> why I'm 18 and my curfew uh 1030? Like, how you just gone? That's a, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. It's a big difference. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that in a, as an example yeah, yeah, yeah. of how we question God. What, what, which way you come into them? You come into them and, and, and just, I need a better understanding? Or, or I, I'm, I'm going to check you, God, because you're wrong. No. Now. That's a dangerous place. Yeah, yeah. You're going to end up like Job. <laughs> Four chapters in. Absolutely. I'm trying to check God. <laughs> God says, don't be afraid to come to me, for you will get wisdom if you seek it. Amen. There are over 40, over 40 scriptures that leak understanding and wisdom in scripture. We see there he sought understanding. And in James it says, if you lack wisdom, but those are two, two, the two things of the same kind almost. They work together. In scripture, you're going to see it numerous times. Wisdom, understanding, wisdom, understanding, wisdom, understanding. Because without wisdom, there is no understanding. You can't have wisdom without understanding. They work together. So don't get, oh, that's, 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 that says wisdom. This ain't understanding. They both are the same cord. Amen. Yes, they work together. Proverbs 3.19 said, the Lord is, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. And in Ephesians 5, 17, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. They work together. <laughs> they work together. God does not want us ignorant or without help. Amen? So we're going to look at the book of Adam and Eve again. Chapter 3 and 11. This is another example of, of prayer in scripture. Not the King James, but of course, you know, here at True Believer, we go into the lost books. Right. So for the viewing audience, download. Yeah. <laughs> go to True Believer website. We have the books there for you. <laughs> if you can't find it, amen. But in chapter 311, it shows the cherubim praying to the Lord when he saw the fear that gripped Adam and Eve after seeing him, the cherubim, guard the garden after they were expelled. Because the cherubim had a sword, a flaming fire. Right. So that scared the mess out of them. Yeah, they died. <laughs> <laughs> but the cherubim had mercy and pity on them. So he wanted to know, what should I do? So what did he do? He went to God. So that's number two. And it shows in Genesis 3.24 about that same cherubim guarding the east, that God put him there on the east of the garden to correlate between the two for the viewing audience. Genesis 3.24. 
And in the book of Adam and Eve, chapter 3, verse 11. Amen. 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 We always got to correlate. Amen. So we learned some things through that angel and what he did. Amen. For prayer. In his prayer. The first thing he did, he turned from Adam and Eve. <laughs> He turned from Adam and Eve because Adam and Eve represent sin, darkness. You can't go to God with sin on you. You can't go to God full of darkness. Like we say, your prayers gonna come up, they're gonna be a mess because you ain't clean. He don't come, he don't accept nothing. Yes, it has to be pure. So he turned from Adam and Eve because they were the falling. They were the representation of sin. So first things first, we must go from the thing that God dislikes if you want power in prayer. Uh -huh. Repent. That's, right. <laughs> That's the first thing Jesus said, repent. <laughs> when he started his ministry, repent. Amen. It's for a reason. If you want any type of power, you're going to have to change your ways. Change from what you knowing is bad to do. Amen. The second thing the cherub did, he went to heaven. This shows he you go to where the help is. Amen. He went to where his help was. Amen. He went to heaven. Psalms 121.1 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. You can't expect to get power in prayer with still that fleshly mindset. Once again, so how do we get to or access heaven when we haven't yet died on earth? We will get to that. But the Holy Spirit just gave me seven in Chronicles chapter seven and verse 14. It says, if my people which are called by my name, yeah, yeah. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face yeah. and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven <laughs> and forgive their sin yeah. and will hear their land. Mm -hmm. But in that, he said, then I will hear from heaven. Yeah. He didn't even say, then I'm going to hear from you. Mm -hmm. He said, then yeah. I will hear from, from heaven. heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And forgive their sin and will hear their land. Mm -hmm. So, even still in that, heaven rules. That's right. Heaven rules. God's word, it reigns. <laughs> even when we come to Him in our own words, we have to understand that those words that we speak that agree with His word, mm -hmm. that's what He hears. Yeah. That's what He hears. And then He says, I hear from heaven. Heaven speaks, and then heaven acts. That's right. Yeah. Heaven speaks, yeah. and then heaven acts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Three. The cherub gave God his proper respect by calling him Lord. In prayer, we must understand the seat we are approaching. It is not like approaching... Like I wrote, your boss is not like approaching your cousin them. Uh -huh. But we're approaching God. Right. The creator of all things. Right. Yahweh. Right. Elohim. Jehovah. Yeah. Yeah. We have to come to God respectfully Amen. if we expect to have our prayers answered. Right. To expect to have any power in prayer. Amen? Amen. 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 Number four, the fourth thing that the cherub did, he told God the situation in 3, 12 through 13. So let's think about it. When you tell God your situation, how do you tell him <laughs> your situation? Are you, to <laughs> Are you complaining? Or like you say, it's how you come to him. Is it with attitude? 
Is it about to, like he say, gossip or backbite? Like the, he gave me one scripture about the Pharisees in Luke 18, 11. It says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men. I thank thee that I am not as the other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Y'all hear that? <laughs> they, the Pharisees actually went to God like that. <laughs> you think that prayer is going to get answered? <laughs> Try again. Try again. <laughs> it was all about them and pumping themselves up. Right. No compassion was found. No heart for others, as you stated, was present. But the chair prayed with God intentions. Amen? With God intentions. The fifth thing the chair did, he asked what should they do to them. The angel was working with God to bring about a resolution right. to a problem. With God, as you stated other, earlier. With God. What are we going to do? We. We. Because he understood that he get his instructions from God. And it made me think of, I watch a show called New Amsterdam. <laughs> I don't know if y'all watch that show. Anybody watch that show? Well, in that show, it's a medical show. But in that show, uh, the main actor, Max, the main character, Max, is the hospital director. And his main thing is helping others. Helping others. So he always say, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? That's how we need to be. What can I do to help? In a godly way. What can I do to help? Not focusing on us. But what, what, what do you need me to do down here? So that your will can continue to be in, in, in effect in the earth. Because we are, as the angel was, getting instructions from him. How can we help? Not, ooh, Lord, this girl. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth of the Hebrew definition of ministry is help, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. So truly, we are ministers <laughs> of God. We should be asking him, God, how can I serve you? Yeah. What do you need me to do today? Who is it that I need to affect with your love today? Who is it that I need to extend your grace and your mercy to today? Because a lot of times people won't, and I say the world especially, won't experience the love of God unless we exemplify it. Right. We right. are the living, walking, talking Bibles yeah. that many will never get to experience. Mm -hmm. How will they get to read effectively and fluently if we don't execute the word of God in our lives properly. God, how do you need me to be a blessing today? It's not just about us. He, the overflow, he said, uh, um, when we pay our tithes, right? He said, I will open up the window of heaven and pour you out blessings that you will not have room enough to, co to contain, to receive, right? right. Then we always want to go back to, um, it's in, I forget, but it's a press down, shake it again, and run it over, right? Yeah. Lord forgive me for not remembering the address right now. But we always quick to quote these scriptures because we think that the overflow applies to us. Again, I'm going to keep going back to it. It's not just for us. Even the things that we go through, the Bible tells us we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies. If we don't ever give the word of our testimony, we won't even help the world overcome the struggle that they're going through. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. So again, God, how do I serve you today? How do I know what my assignment for today is? And said, God, Lord, we, we ask God in prayer, give us our daily bread, give us our daily sustenance, right. 
right. Well, how do I sustain my day, God? How? What are the instructions for my day? How do I make it successfully if I never go and say, give me the instructions for, Lord, I need the instructions. I can't make it through this day without your wisdom, without your spirit. Right. I can't make it through without your word. That's right. But first, we got to have the word in our heart so that we can make sure we don't sin against it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. So in order for us to be the Bible, we got to read the Bible and oh. take it in. Oh. Amen. 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 And then we can pray the Bible yeah. back to God. That's right. And receive the Bible back again. It's almost like the water cycle. Yeah. It go up and come back down. And go up and come back down. That's right. That's right. It's repeating. It's repeating. It's repeating. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. 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 So we can see the cherub there was in conjunction with God. Amen. Amen. And because he went to him the right way and cared about what God wanted, God answered his prayer and gave mercy to Adam and Eve and he brought the word and restored them uh -huh. because of how the angel the cherub went to him he went to them and Adam and Eve for help right. just like if we can go for other people yes. and they can be helped amen yeah, right. so there is no power in prayer unless we fall under the subjection of God and see him as our heavenly father. That's right, that's right. Amen. Amen. We ain't got no power if daddy ain't giving us no. <laughs> Amen. That's right. You can't go all out there willy nilly and doing. But we see in scripture, but in the New Testament, the people is out there trying to do like the apostles. And they got beat up. Because yeah. you ain't have no power. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't have no power. You just out here doing stuff, but you ain't fall under the, the, the power. Because God is the ultimate power. He gives power to all things because he is power. Why? That's why the sun is so bright. We just think the sun is the sun. No, God made the sun. That's right. That's right. It's hot. It's all get out. But he is hotter. Amen. <laughs> Hot, huh? <laughs> come on, come on. Ain't no fire hot. <laughs> then the fire of God, that's the all consuming. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 So you're the original hot boy. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so we have to look at ourselves when we're praying as, as Prophetess Kim said. What is our intention? What is our agenda? The power comes when we pray correctly. Amen. It sends signal, like I said, up to God when we pray the right way. Amen. James 1 and 6 says, but let him, the person that lacks wisdom, ask in faith without wavering. For he that wavers in is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man, the one that wavers, Think that he shall receive anything, anything of the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So the, man, the main part of James 1 is faith. That's where your power lies, in your faith. We see in scripture where he, Jesus called them plenty of times, faithless generation. You a faithless generation. Right. Y'all got unbelief. Where is your faith? Right. You can heal these people. You could have cast it out. But where's your faith? You need more faith. And he just said, if you have a faith as the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. But it's your faith that activates the Holy Spirit to do what needs to be done in your prayer. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And we're going to look at faith. There's two Hebrew and Greek faith. You have pistis and you have a munu. Pistis and a munu. Pistis is belief, trust, and confidence. That's in the New Testament. Faith. 
Belief, trust, confidence. Imunu in Hebrew is steadfastness, firmness, stability, loyalty. You see why in James he say a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You ain't firm. You ain't loyal to nothing. You faithless. None. So how am I going to answer your prayer and you can't even... Exactly. You all over the place. Get yourself together first. Fall under me first. Show yourself faithful. Be loyal. First. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, you ain't even made Jesus your Lord and Savior yet. Your emotions are your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Oh, come on. And everywhere your emotions lead you, you follow. Oh, but you want to come before God, believe in something in faith. Oh. The faith of your emotions. That's sad. Mm -hmm. That's sad and that's, that's real. And your emotions gonna lead you straight to hell. I hate to say it. Because it's a feeling and it's temporary. Right. But the word of God is eternal. Eternal. Eternal, everlasting. Yeah. It will never die. That's right. Amen. That's right. So you gonna trust the emotion that's temporary? Or are you going to stand on the word of God that is eternal? It will withstand all things. Hallelujah. Stability. It's proven. What have your emotions proven to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But chaos. Confusion. Depression. This, yeah, disease. This ease in your mind. This ease in your spirit. That's what emotions will lead you to. And away from God. Yeah, further, further, further and further, further, further away from God. Yes. But when you hold on to the word of God, it'll draw you closer yes. to God. Absolutely. Yes. It'll bind us yes. to the word of God. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. The last part of faith that really was, yeah, yeah. Faith. It says a patheo is a faith that persuades. A faith that persuades. So in our prayers, are we persuading God? Is our faith strong enough to persuade God to intervene, have his angels intervene on our behalf? Or is he just sitting there? I ain't I ain't, I ain't the move or nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I ain't moving nothing. And you wonder why your prayers aren't being answered. Because you ain't got no faith. Your faith is what persuades him to move, to have action, to perform. Amen. And we've seen this in when the woman, she had faith in Jesus' time. She touched the hem of his garment. And then one, uh, uh, was it Luke? One part of the gospel, it say he felt the power come out of him. Because her faith, she drew something out. She drew something out. In her mind, at the moment she made contact. Yeah. She was so resolved within herself that the moment of contact, God said, ah, it's released. Somebody touched me. Yeah. Instantly. So uh, in our prayers, do we have that same power? Does God feel that nudge? Oh yeah, somebody gonna touch me. Who is that? He want to see more about you. Where you are? Who is that? Where you at? Oh yeah. Oh oh, that's Stephanie right there. Oh yeah, I know. I know that tug right there. I know that. Cause the faith is a, a fruit of the spirit. So it's his spirit that's connecting to him. So that's automatically going to tug at him. Because this is me. This is my character. This is me. Oh, yeah, she, she walking in me. So I got to come in and intervene on her behalf. I got to heed to her call. The children of Israel, 40 years, nothing. Because he closed his ears. But when we're walking in faith, when we're walking in faith, he is there to help us. Amen. Amen. 
That's our power, our faith. The power of prayer. Amen. Amen. So we can all stand up. All faithful generation. <laughs> daily Amen. begin to go before the father for those yeah. satellite coordinates yeah, yeah. and begin to ask for the signal to go down and specifically address those issues that God has placed on your heart to address Amen. get the daily assignment from God get those coordinates as we pray us out you gonna pray us out amen 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 I was taking shots. Huh? <laughs> Y'all give it up for these ladies. They did a good job. They did a great job. They came with a great word. A prepared team about the power of prayer. And the main point of that just stuck out to me was when both of y'all said, when you pray to God, you have to have a reason to pray. Or why else would you be praying? Right. Because the lady that y'all were saying that touched the hem of his garment, she had a reason. It was saying she was sick. She was going through some things. And in her mind, she got to the point to where if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she had that much faith and she had that reason. If I could just touch his garment, I know I will be healed. It was no doubt. No doubt. No doubt at all. And she knew. I just got to touch. I don't even have to make it to him. It's that much power in what he wearing. I can just touch his garment and I'm healed. And just think about the scripture. He was walking through a crowd of people that was already touching on him. Everybody was already touching on him. But everybody touching on them without purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody calling out to them without purpose. They touching on them without purpose. He just moving through this. But the one out of the whole crowd that had purpose didn't even touch him. him. Right. I got to his garment. And from that one touch, somebody touched me. People in the crowd, well, we all touch you. No. Somebody touched me. Somebody came to me with intent and somebody came to me with purpose and somebody came to me with absolute faith. And that is the person who I'm going to listen to. I will answer their prayers. That stuck out to me. You have to have a purpose when you're praying to God or what are you praying for? And why are you expecting him to answer when you don't even really know what you're praying for? Man. Like I said, these ladies did a great job. Power of prayer. Great job. And what I'm going to do is ask Brother Chitty Okafor to come up, pray for these ladies that poured out to us, and pray us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this children of yours. We thank you for the words that you brought forth. Yes, Through them, we thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for everything that has happened here today. Yes, thank you, Lord. We thank you because the words are going to make us way better in our understanding to us the way we should pray. Yes, yes, yes. As we go home, we ask you to go home with us. Yes, God, and protect us. Help us use what we've um, learned today to pray in the course of the week yes, that will pray with purpose and understanding yes, help us be better people yes, protect us as we go home yes, by the time we come back here next week it will be to the glory and honor of your name yes, bless those that are watching us from home yes, let the words that has come forth today impact in their lives yes, we want to hear feedbacks from them too to know that actually we're in course with what you have sent us here to do. Yes. Recover ourselves and our entire family in the blood of Jesus. Yes. No strain will let us touch us. Yes, God. 
both us here and those that are watching us. We'll get testimonies from everywhere to the glory and honor of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.